update on persecuted Iranian atheist Sohail Arabi. So, guys, this is very important. We have been, the Atheist Republic is part of the Coalition for the Political Sponsorship of Sohail Arabi. For those who don't know, Sohail was previously sentenced to death for insulting the Prophet Muhammad. And because of um, many secular organizations, including Atheist Republic, internationally advocating for him, his death sentence was commuted, and then he was released from prison. And then recently, at the very beginning of the year, January 2nd, he was violently arrested by Iranian um, security forces and got sent back to prison. And so we have been campaigning for him and advocating for him, and we will continue to do so until he is free. Now, we have an update on um, what his situation is. So Armin, if you don't mind, could you please translate this update from ex-Muslim Stockholm? And um, I talked to Milad today, so I confirmed some things and I can also give a few more details, but. Um, okay, so it says, خبر رسیده از تیم مکالمه ای که سوهل عربی با یکی از دوستانش در براسه برقرار کند من تنظیر نشد so this, is, this has been a confirmed story based on what Sohail has said to one of this a conversation that Sohail has had with one of his friends okay so it says Sohail today um, called and said and this is what, what this was five days ago right so this is Sohail Arabi wait, wait, so again for people who might not know Sohail Arabi is an ex-Muslim atheist political prisoner in Iran. Um, so apparently they told it, they took him. So remember, we were telling you guys about trying to, they were trying to release prisoners. And so Al Arabi being a prisoner, they were trying to do that with him as well. So they took him to the court um, and the court and the judge at the court told him to uh, give a forgiveness, write a forgiveness letter and to, um, to promise that he will not do what he had done before. Uh, so that they could release him. And so Hale responded to the judge that it is you who has to do that for us. It's you who have to basically give us ta'ahod. Ta'ahod means like you ask for forgiveness and you say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I will never do this again. So that's what being giving ta'ahod means, right? And so he was like, I don't need to give ta'ahod. You need to give ta'ahod because it was you who did the wrong. Uh, you're in the wrong, right? And then the judge said, Look, guys, think about this. The guy could be free, but the court, the judge is telling Sohail, like, do this and you will free you. And he's like, nope, I didn't do anything wrong. So why should I do this, right? Uh, the judge said that we will reduce your bail to 50 million, uh, to 50, oh, to 50 to, two months only, I think, to 50 two months or 50 million two months. Oh, wow. I think it was so probably only 50 million. To a very small, no, I think it's 52 minutes, to a very small amount. So basically almost like zero just to so that he can go, right? Um, so that you could go and rest. And then Sohel responded, <laughs> uh, I don't need rest. You have to give, you have to give Ta'ahod so that we will forgive you. Um, and then Sohel had raised his voice at, at the judge. Um, and then the judge said, go think about this for a week and calm down and then reply give us your answer because it seems like you're not calm and so he responded i am calm and whenever you manage to bring back to life the young people you have killed maybe then i would be calm but um and then I, oh so so for apparently his conditions for being uh, calm is for you to bring back the people you have killed and also that we put you on trial and punish you for your crimes. Uh, and then, uh, okay, so apparently we now have what the charge against Sohail was. So we now know, because we didn't know up, to, up until now, what was, the, what was the official charge against Sohail Arabi for him being in prison. So the confirmation is that his charge is to advertise against the regime. So he's he's in jail right now for advertising against the regime. Yeah, propaganda uh, against by, the regime, against Islam, against national security, that kind of shit. Yes. Well, this time it's against the regime. Last time it was Islam. This time it's against the regime, not Islam, right? So apparently he did that when he's uh, 
during his travels to Kurdistan and to Sistan Baluchistan. And oh, his re- apparently his report. Okay, so his reports on the situation in Sistan Baluchistan and Kurdistan, his reports of what's happening there has been considered advertising against the regime, and that's why he has been arrested. Oh, so that last line is also very important. Um, so they transferred him from a, a, a prison in Tehran to another prison somewhere else. Do you know where where is his new prison? In Karaj. In- in Karaj, which is like which a is satellite cool. city of Tehran, for those who don't know. Yes, but apparently they didn't transfer his medicine and his tools, right? So he is—he really needs his medicine because he has high blood pressure and he's in desperate need of them. But they didn't transfer his medicine, so he has no access to his medicine right now in this new prison. So there's that. Yeah, thank you for translating all of that, Armin. Um, it, that really helped. Um. Yeah, so I um, spoke to uh, Milad Raisimanesh. That's how you say his last name, right? Yes, Raisimanesh. Raisimanesh, who runs um, ex-Muslim Stockholm or ex-Muslim Scandinavia. Um, and um, I, I um, confirmed the source of this information. And obviously, I can't um, say who it is, but I, I trust the source of this information. And... Um, the update on him is that he's he's very sick because he's being denied the medication that he needs they're not transferring it with him and um that uh yeah he's he's still in prison and still needs his medication and now we have more ideas about what the charges are likely to be and um that he has been very politically active in the prisons as well and so the judge is like calm down (laughs) Like, you're, you know, because he, he won't stop talking about the revolution and stuff mm. in prison. And, um, yeah, he just refuses. Like, this is, if anyone has ever spoken to Sohail or had an interaction with him, like, you know, his conviction is so strong. Like, he, he refuses to back down on anything um and he's very very and just yeah very strong conviction and he's like no i'm not gonna go out the easy way i'm going to sit here and do this and see it through mm. like that's the impression i always got from him um and um i think this is just another reflection of that and um i so unfortunately you know it is likely that he is going to continue to face charges, that he could still face trial. Um, he was not released. He was not part of the people being released in these general amnesties. Um, but we do have some good news. Armin, can you pull up the picture that I put in the private chat? And the good news is, is that a few weeks ago, about a week and a half ago, if I remember correctly, so Hale's mother, Farangis Maslum, was released from prison. So Farangis is free. For those who don't know, um, Farangis is uh, So Hale's mother, and she was sent to prison by the regime, even though she suffered a stroke because she would not stop fighting for her son. Her crime is that she would not stop advocating for her son. That she was making too much noise, that she was talking to reporters, that she wouldn't shut up. And so she was charged, if my memory serves me correctly, with propaganda against the regime was one of the charges. And she was sentenced to um, about 16 to 18 months in prison, I believe. And um, she had, and she was released recently. So this is wonderful news. And um, it's it's great that she's been released. She can receive the medical care that she needs. And um, it just, I really wish that they were released together because when Sohail was released from prison, his mother was in prison. Mm. And now she's released and he's back in prison. So, so they, they don't have, see each, so they yeah. don't see each other. When Sohail was free, 
he didn't have access to her mom and now her mom is free and he still doesn't have access they, they just don't get to be with each other god no. damn it and i think like from geese has become like a woman's rights activist she's become a prisoner rights activist there was a really sweet interview that sohail did for iran wire talking about his mom and talking about how she's transformed into like this strong woman that fights for other people and like they bond over their love for like emma goldman who's like an anarchist writer and stuff and um and i think of um there's an old video from a few years ago where for Nowruz, Ferengis went outside the gates of Avin prison where Sohail was incarcerated and she made a half scene in front of the prison for Sohail on Nowruz because they couldn't celebrate it together. Like my heart, <laughs> it just breaks. Um, so we are really happy to hear about her release and are definitely, um, celebrating. So that, that's the good news this week. Yeah. I want to highlight this comment because I, uh, so one night he didn't say my country, you mean the United States, right? Helped install this government because of oil and I am embarrassed and ashamed of it. Okay. I, I, I don't, I mean, the United States did have a role, but the responsibility of this war are the Iranian people. Okay, let's make sure that we give the agency and the blame where it's deserved, okay? The Iranian people who did the revolution in 1979, they chose this. This is not forced by them on by United States, okay? The United States would not have been able to, wouldn't have done this if the people, if this was not the will of the people of Iran, the, the Iranian people are suffering because they made a mistake. This is not mainly the fault of, made, the government of the United States made some mistakes here, but they did not install this government. The shame, and by, by the way, even if they did, the American, you don't, like, I don't understand how you could be embarrassed about something you have no role in. That's That's ridiculous. But the shame and the embarrassment is for the Iranian people who are in the streets doing a revolution against a government that needed reform but not toppling. That's where the blame should lie, the Iranian people who did the revolution. Let, let's make sure that we don't misdirect where the blame is. Because we do a lot of times, like we think like, we we rob people of their agency by always like trying to blame Western governments of, over everything, and then we rob them of their agency to be able to make the change. Yeah, but Musica, you're saying mullahs took advantage of the people, right? It was it was also the other way around. The people, the mullahs didn't even think about being in government. The mullahs couldn't even imagine being in the government. It was the people who pushed them there. It was the people's fault. Like, like let's let's make sure that we don't always make it seem like the people are no, the people are always right, and it's the governments and world powers that are wrong. Sometimes it's the people who are wrong. Sometimes it's the people who need to be blamed, and it was the Iranian people who did this. The mullahs were not smart enough even to understand how to take the power. It was like people who were leftists and communist people. It was, who, it was the communists. Yes. The communists. They actually, it was the communists, the people who were being so, the, the anti-imperialist attitude that people were having, they actually were taking advantage of the mullahs. The mullahs at some point smarter, the mullahs were being used by the communists because they didn't have the networking capabilities to reach the people. So they thought they would be in power. At some points, the mullahs realized that they actually have a lot of control over this. And, and, and they flipped. The, even after the revolution, the mullahs thought like, okay, now we could go back to our mosques and to our uh, do our like religious stuff. They didn't think that they're going to be in power. At some point, they realized like, wait a minute, we have so much power here. Why should we give this to the commies? Well, and also they realized that the commies were going to scapegoat them. Mm. And the little choppy choppy, so they decided to do choppy choppy first. Yes. 
Yeah. Woof, yeah. woof, if we want to get spicy. So one night he didn't say, Armin, like I said, I do appreciate your point. I don't want to deprive anyone for, of agency. I just know my freedom-loving government helped Iran. For example. Yeah, but it, again, it's, um, I mean, I mean, at that point, at that point, um, at that point, like, I, 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 I can see why they would be making, would they, they would make that mistake. It was it was an age of revolution, and it seemed so apparent that this is what the Iranian people want. Technically, what the what the United States was doing was giving in to the demand of the people of Iran. So again, it's the blame is on the Iranian people. Oh wow! Pakistani patriot force is saying, "I'm turning 21 in a few weeks and becoming more wise. This channel has made me wise." <laughs> wow. Wow, we're getting a lot of compliments. Wow. From... Well, hey, uh, Pakistani Patriot Force, come back in a few weeks and we can tell you happy birthday. Okay, so Seth is clarifying, which is good because I should have said many Iranian people, not the Iranian people as a whole. I should I shouldn't have generalized, right? Seth is saying it was some of the Iranian people who did this, and in particular, Khomeini opportunistically endorsing the embassy seizure and tricking the large secular provisional government into resigning. Yeah, it was. Okay, so you're right. Not I should clarify. I shouldn't use such general term. I shouldn't say Iranian people. I should say some Iranian people, but I do want to include in the some the, also the people who stood stood by and let it happen, right? Mm. Um, but I shouldn't include I shouldn't include the people who bravely stood up against it. There are some people who realize what a mess this is, and they shouldn't be doing that. But the people who did the revolution and the people who let it happen, they are to be blamed. Yeah. Uh, Harris is unblocking pa uh, Pakistan Patriot first. <laughs> With a kiss. Wow. Uh, I was saying, um, oh, I, I hope, yeah, Armin literally don't mind being late here. I really do appreciate your take. You know a lot more than me. No, it's okay. No, I wasn't, I wasn't, I hope I didn't come off as rude or something. I was just like, um, Clarifying my views in this. Right? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm, no, mm -hmm. yeah, well, thank you for that. I, I didn't think you would mind it, so I, I hope you didn't mind it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, from all days, I'm lecturing him uh, him or her on the day that he, he just became a member. <laughs> this is what you get for becoming a member. When I Actually, it. though, <laughs> this is Atheist Republic. This is why people come here. <laughs> oh, my uh, God. Okay. Amazing. I had such a fun show today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so no, 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 not coming off as rude. Okay, good. So we're only 10 minutes over time, so that's good. Yes, we tried to keep it under two hours, but so almost, we got it almost right. Um, and yeah, this is such a great, look at this. Harris is saying, um, nationalism and religion make us do really silly things. Okay, don't yes, rub it in, Harris. Don't rub it in. <laughs> so, like, don't do that. I told you so right now. This is... <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.